my name is Maureen, Maureen Some. I'm the founder of World Love Foundation and I'm a young youth representative of conservation in Kenya. My journey, it started when I was three years old. I grew up in Lekipia County, which is one of the best destinations for wildlife, you know that. Um, I wanted to adopt an elephant when I was about nine years. Then we moved from Nakita to Nairobi, totally different environment. So to keep myself busy, I started risking street cars and street dogs. So by the time I was 10, I had over 30 street cars and dogs and a few birds. So I dressed with the birds, the creature agent, and then we used them. Um, so this went on for quite a while until I was 15. And I decided to work with Kid AWS, volunteer that is in the animal orphanage. So I volunteered for quite some time in the orphanage in the spy work. I studied entrepreneurship, <laughs> entrepreneurship. I needed that business management skills to also run the world now. When I was in Brookhouse, now doing my course in diploma, I decided why don't I do a few of my projects related to what I do in the orphanage. So I did a small uh, video on ecotourism and caught everyone's attention. Not just the media in Kenya but outside. So it became bigger than what I had planned. Mm -hmm. So I decided when I cleared, I launched Wild Now. So it became an officially registered organization. Wild Now is basically a platform for the young people who are interested in conservation. And we've done a lot of projects. I have to say my favorite project, because we've done a lot, has to be the Report Campaign. So the Report Campaign, I think it's one of the biggest projects um, on elephant conservation in the world currently. Um, it was led by the First Lady, um, uh, Excellency Margaret Claire Kenyatta, and, and, and a few other guys in the government and Richard Branson. Mm -hmm. So it was a big project and I'm happy that they considered having an image of a young person in such a project. It's important to understand how to actually take care of the environment. Where I grew up in Nikipia, um, the community around me used to come down trees a lot for the benefit of income. And at the same time, I've encountered a lot of human rights conflict. Yeah. Um, and I remember one of the ways that people used to get rid of the elephants that you can't destroy their crops is through the Kubalisha and the So what that means is using a block of wood, uh, this big block of wood, they hammer a six inch in the middle of the block of wood and place them on the farm. So in the middle of the night, because our house was usually next to the forest, we would see the elephants coming and they would step on the block of wood. So imagine you walking for miles and weeks with a six inch nail on your foot. So that's how bad it was back then. I hope that kids will not just be taught protect the environment. How do you do it? There's a whole uh, science around it. You know, do it the right, don't do the right thing the wrong way. We call this, there's always a strategy. So I hope the new curriculum, even though it's beginning, that the people who are handling it are professionals and know the way around the environment. I've interacted with a lot of um, communities in Kenya that they, 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 they've been taught they should be doing tree planting conserve the area around them, but they are doing it wrong. Do you know that we can actually be doing planting but you're not doing it the right way? Is that a specific way to, to, to um, cover that uh, sector of tree planting, plant certain trees in certain areas. So the community that we were dealing with, they've been planting eucalyptus trees. And this is out of good doing. You know, they want to do good to the environment, but they yeah, they are, they are harming the environment even more. This community of Maasai people planted eucalyptus around the the riverbed because it takes in a lot of water. Then they said it probably ten years later at fifteen thousand. The step was for fifteen thousand. But the amount of water that that eucalyptus takes, the climate change doesn't just affect the environment affects our health so we will die immediately 
that's why it affects our economy. That's why Barack Obama said a country that will take climate change action seriously is going to grow economically. So climate change is something that doesn't really um, evolve around the environment, but also humanitarian work, poverty and such things. We don't have to wait for extreme measures for us to start acting. Greta is always talking about climate change, but no one listens to that matter. Just few young people, kids who take it seriously, but it's hard to take a whole um, fire forest fire and floods in East Africa first with the whole culture of this is climate change. The other day I was on Instagram and I was talking to some of uh, 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 my followers about the locust. And because of the billions of locusts in Africa, and that's when people are trying like, oh gosh, so climate change has really been given a lot of warning before all this happened. But I believe it's better to act before something happens. As individuals, even I myself have been a victim of this, that when it comes to climate change or anything in regards to what environmental crisis, we always, we are very loud to the government and we always, we, we go on strikes, we, we, we demand this to happen, why don't we also start acting? Do good to the environment in whatever way possible.